You know something I've never seen before? A robot that picks locks. So I made one. I spent about a month in Fusion designing it. A week or two writing the firmware. A few surprises along the way that made the whole thing a lot easier. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. And if you're anything like me and you want to know the, the why and the how of making something, then stick around. Okay, before we get started, we should probably talk about what lock picking is in general. Here's a basic model of the internals of our lock. The key pins push against the driver pins, and if the bottom of all the driver pins are at the shear line, then the plug is able to rotate and the lock will open. We need to apply tension to the plug and push on the key pins in an attempt to seize the driver pins above the shear line. If we're able to get this for all the pins, then we pick the lock and the plug can rotate and it opens. The idea here is to split the robot into two parts, the tension system and the picking system. And they're gonna need some load cells to detect when pins are set or when the lock is actually in a bind. And they need to rotate at the same time. Now we're not dealing with any crazy forces, so I'm pretty certain that I can just 3D print 90% of this robot and get away with it. Here's the first design. And you can see where I've kind of split the two systems apart where they're connected together and they all rotate using some large bearings. Let's start with the tension system. We'll need a motor and a jig to hold the lock and a large bearing. Any force applied to the load cell will transfer into the lock's plug through the keyhole. Okay, the tension side's all put together, but real quick, let's talk about how these load cells work. They are super cool. They're like $5 on Amazon for the load cell and the amplifier board. They're a piece of aluminum with a hole cut out of the center, and that allows for a predictable amount of flex in the aluminum at this weak point. And then under this white epoxy is a really cool sensor that detects how much stress the aluminum's under. And from that, you can calibrate it with a known weight and you can predictably measure how much force is being applied to something. We should be able to pick the lock while under stress and we can calculate how much torque we're applying to the plug to get the pins in a bind. So let's try that. So our load cell reported the same amount of stress as if it had a 0.2 kilogram weight hung off the end of it. And the arm is actually seven centimeters long. So that means that the amount of torque that's required to put the pins in a bind is about 1.4 kilogram centimeters or 0.13 Newton meters. So what we can do now is just program the motor to turn the pulley until the load cell reports the same amount of stress. And we should be able to pick the lock while the motor's holding the tension and test it out that way. Let's go give that a shot. Is it moving? Yeah, you just, it's moving really slow. I'll make it faster, but this is like, like literally the first time it worked. You have to slowly break into some of time. So it looks like the tension system is good to go. So let's move over to the arm side of the robot, test out if we can move the pick around. The picking system consists of these two symmetric arms that are driven by NEMA 17 motors and they use quarter 20 bolts and nuts. The parallel arms ensure that the effector never changes orientation. It's always pointing the same direction and it never tilts. <laughs> of course the first move didn't work. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Uh. Shoot. 
Seriously? Okay, I'm having a lot of trouble with binding. This thing just will not move the full range of motion and I'm pretty certain it has something to do with that. I think I'm gonna have to make another bracket. Okay, I think we're past binding. Now it's time to add some macro switches. We're gonna use these things as homing switches. They're gonna be mounted here. Every time the robot boots up or we run the picking routine, it'll back up into that switch and trip it and then we know where we're at and we can start moving around inside the lock. What are you binding? Ugh, I thought that was gonna work. Okay, so I just thought that the binding was behind me until I tried to home. And I cannot get this thing to home. I tried resetting the nuts. I printed out another version of the ball screws and put it back together. I could not get the thing to work. I, I tried lubing the, the bolts to make them glide a little easier. Tried everything. Until I noticed this. Well, there's why it's binding. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, we've tested both systems. Let's print out all the parts we need to put them together. Hopefully everything lines up and see if we can get this thing to pick a lock. All right, so we've got them both together. Let's move the pick around inside the lock. Okay. I have a slight confession. You remember a few weeks ago when I was picking the lock while the motor was applying tension? Well, I'm a complete lock picking noob and I got frustrated and this happened. Okay, up until that point, I had been planning on doing single pin picking. I just tried it and the lock popped open and instantly I was like, oh, you just wasted months. I spent a ton of time making sure that the arms were able to detect pressure so I could set the pins, detect when the pins were set, and then move on to the next pin. I spent a ton of time riding the kinematics engine in the firmware, relearning trig, and couldn't figure it out. Had to talk to a buddy, and he was like, hey, you know, it's just triangles. And I was like, hey, I forgot how to spell triangle. So that I could say, move to the back of the lock, and then move to pin one, and then try it, and then move to pin two, and try it. All that time, wasted when you can just drag <laughs> the pick and the thing pops open. So let's update the firmware and see if the lock opens up. So much time. Oh my gosh, I think that worked. Holy moly. I'm so excited. Okay. What do I need to do? I need to oh, I hit the light. Okay, so I calmed down a little bit. I updated the firmware so that way it does the full rotation. Oh, speaking of firmware, I'm not really going to get into the code too much because I'll put it all on GitHub and you can go through there and check it out. I did try MicroPython with this project. I wanted to try it, I wanted to test it out. That's why I went with an ESP32 board. And I'm sold. I mean, the whole thing runs on like 500 lines of code and 
anyways, yeah, I'll throw it in a GitHub. You can check it out, see how bad I am at programming, but it'll be there. Anyways, without further ado, here's Pin, the world's first lockpicking robot. So this thing was a lot of fun to build. It only can pick a master lock number three, but I have an idea to make another version that's able to take on high security locks with the counter picking pins. Um, but I'm gonna need better tooling to make it. So I may or may not do that. If you wanna see that, leave a comment down below. Or if you have another cool idea that you wanna see me build, you can leave a comment and I may pick it up and run with it. Um, but if this kind of stuff interests you, hit subscribe and you'll get some future projects that are just as wild and pointless as this. See ya.